a pleasant day to everyone. I am Luis Rafael Embrasilita. I'm welcoming you to my educational vlog. Today, we are going to be talking all about differentiation and derivatives. Now, you might be asking, what is differentiation? What is derivatives? And why do we need to learn all about them? Well, I'm going to answer those questions in the next few minutes. Differentiation in mathematics is a process of finding a function's derivative. Now, what are derivatives? Derivatives in mathematics, particularly differential calculus, the derivative is a way to show instantaneous rate of change. That is, the amount by which a function is changing at one given point. For functions that act on the real numbers, it is the slope of the tangent line at the point on the graph. Derivatives are a fundamental tool in calculus. Now let us ask ourselves, what are the application of derivatives in real life? Derivatives are important in many fields, most especially in physics and science. But it can also be used in business. For example, we use derivatives to calculate the profit and loss in business using graphs. Next is in science. It is very useful in science, particularly physics. Derivatives are applied to check temperature variation, determining speed or distance covered, such as miles per hour, kilometer per hour, and etc., and many other uses in the physics field. Now that seems all interesting, but how do we find derivatives of functions? Derivatives of functions, we follow several rules, and we apply those rules in finding the derivative of functions. Let us start with the first rule. Now let us talk about the first and the most important rule in finding derivatives, which is the power rule. Power rule indicates that the derivative of x raised to the power of n is equal to n minus 1 multiplied by x raised to the power of n minus 1. Next is the sum rule. The sum rule indicates that the derivative of f plus g is equivalent to f prime plus g prime or the derivative of f plus the derivative of g. The difference rule is much like the sum rule, however the operation is different. The difference rule is stating that f minus g's difference or derivative is f prime minus g prime or the derivative of f minus the derivative of g. The next rule will be product rule which is applied when two units are being multiplied. And how we find the derivative of this is simple. We take the derivative of f, multiply it with g, and add it with the derivative of g multiplied by f, or f prime times g plus f plus g prime. Now let us talk about the quotient rule. Let us take for example f over g. Let us take note that f is the numerator and g is the denominator. The derivative of this is f prime g minus g prime f over g squared, or the derivative of f times g minus the derivative of g times f over g squared. First, we multiply 4 square root of x and 2x, which gives us 8 x square root square root of x since this is negative we bring them now we bring them down to the denominator and when we bring them down they turn into positive After that, we divide 4 and 2 because this is the only two numbers on this side, on this side. So 4 divided by, divided by 2, we get 2. Since this, is neg since this is negative because of the negative exponent up here, we bring them down. We bring them down to the denominator. And whatever the remaining, so the remaining, which is square root of x, we transfer them, we bring them down near the denominator. And 
and after after that we find the LCD of this so the LCD R square root of X X square minus two square so these two are the LCD and after that we cross multiply so it negative 8 x square root of x times square root of x x square negative 2 we get negative 8 x square root of x times square root of x x square negative 2 negative square negative 2 times 2 we get 2 times x square negative 2 we transfer the denominator we bring this down to the denominator and Cancel them out. After bringing this down, we cancel them out. The next step is we multiply negative 8x squared of x to square root of x which gives us just negative 8x square 2x square and 2 times 2 times negative 2 we get negative 4 and we bring this down to the denominator And after that, we combine the similar terms, which is negative 8 square root, negative 8 x square plus 2 x square, we get negative 6 x square, negative 4. And we bring down the denominator again. So, this is the answer. We can also simplify this. So, the simplified version of this answer is 2 square root of, I mean, no, 2, 3, x square plus 2. And we bring down the denominator again. It doesn't really matter, simplified or not. Hold on, let me, for, let me make this clear. This is 2. There you go. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the wonderful presentation, Oxid. I'm so proud of you. Once again, everyone, thank you for listening or taking your time to understand what derivatives and differentiation are. Hope you can impress your mathematics teacher with what you have learned in my video. 
Once again, I'm Lucia Palam Brasilita, signing off as your calculus teacher in this educational vlog. Bye-bye! Integral calculus is a branch of calculus concerned with the theory and applications of integrals, while differential calculus focuses on rates of change such as slopes of tangent, lines and velocities. Integral calculus deals with the total size or value such as lengths, areas, and volumes. The two branches are connected by the fundamental theorem of calculus, which shows how a definite integral is calculated by using an antiderivative. For example, integrating a velocity function yields a distance function, which enables the distance traveled by an object over an interval of time to be calculated. As a result, much of integral calculus deals with the derivation of formulas for finding antiderivatives. The great utility of the subject emanates from its use in solving differential equations. In integral calculus, Anti-differentiation or integration is the process of finding the antiderivative or integral. The symbol called the integral sign denotes the operation of anti-differentiation. The function f is called the integrant. The integral sign and the symbol dx go hand in hand and dx helps us identify the variable of integration. The expression f of x plus c is called the general antiderivative. Of f. Meanwhile, each antiderivative of f is called a particular antiderivative of x. These are the rules of integral calculus. Hi guys, my name is Dorothy and I'll be presenting integration. So here we have a given problem. It is the in to integrate cotangent squared x to x. So in order to solve this problem, we will have to go through six steps. So in step 1, we have to rewrite or simplify the given function using the basic trigonometric identities, specifically the Pythagorean identities. So we have here cotangent squared x is equal to cosecant squared x minus 1. So the integral of cosecant squared x minus 1 dx. That is for step 1. And in step 2, we have to apply linearity. Linearity implies that the standard integral of cosecant squared x dx and the integral for 1 dx are each solved separately. So we have the integral of cosecant squared x dx negative and the integral of 1 dx. So in step 3, we have to solve the standard integral for cosecant squared x dx using antiderivative rule. So we have the um, integral of cosecant squared x dx is equals to negative cotangent x. That's for step 3 and step 4. We have to solve the standard integral for 1 dx using the constant rule. So it's integral of 1 dx is equals to x. That's for the constant rule. And after that, we have to go to step 5. In step 5, we will have to combine the one we solved from step 3 and step 4. So we have the integral of cosecant squared x dx and minus the integral of 1 dx is equals to co negative cotangent x minus x. So the answer to our problem, the integrate of cotangent squared x dx is negative cotangent x minus x plus c.